JWST has given us an incredible new image, a sparkling scene of star birth, featuring some of the prettiest space structures we've seen from the telescope so far. And it's even got some of those famous colours that get shown off in some of JWST's most famous and beautiful pictures. 5,500 light years away, a craggy starlit mountaintop is kissed by wispy clouds also bathed in starlight. This is Pismith 24, a young star cluster in the core of the nearby Lobster Nebula in the constellation Scorpius. Really, we're looking at a cosmic dustscape made of space dust and space gas, being constantly eroded and shaped by intense radiation from the stars being born in this scene. It's a vibrant stellar nursery, providing us with a rare insight into large and massive stars. And since it is relatively nearby, at least in terms of the scale of space, it's the perfect place to study these young hot stars and how they evolve. At the heart of the cluster of stars, at the very centre of the image, just above the jagged orange peaks, we have Pismis 24-1. This looks like a gigantic single star, and the tallest peak is basically pointing straight at it. It was once thought to be the most massive known star, but we now know that it's actually at least two stars, even though JWST can't resolve them separately here. The two stars that make it up have masses of 74 and 66 times larger than our sun, so they are large stars, and still among the most massive and most luminous known. Quite a few of the stars here are bright enough to be seen with JWST's signature diffraction spikes. That's the six large spikes coming off of the round stars, with two more small spikes if you look really carefully. These aren't physical spikes that actually exist, but they're artifacts caused in the images by the shape of the telescope's hexagonal mirror and the struts that hold up the telescope's secondary mirror. I have a full video explaining exactly how the spikes come to be if you want to hear more about it. But the important thing to know here is that only the brightest objects in telescope images, usually nearby stars, appear with these spikes. These are super hot infant stars, some almost eight times hotter than our sun, and they are blasting radiation and solar winds out into space, sculpting and eroding a cavity in the dust and gas below and around the stars, which is here seen in yellows, oranges, reds and whites. The entire nebula stretches far beyond what we can see in this image. JWST though takes very zoomed in images, but maybe one day, if the Euclid Space Telescope or the Nancy Grace Roman Space Telescope look in this same direction, we could see the entire thing in this kind of high resolution, as those telescopes have much larger fields of view. We also have older images of Pismis 24 from the Hubble Space Telescope too. This smaller telescope still took a beautiful image back in 2006. This is a slightly more zoomed in image, and the visible light that Hubble is sensitive to doesn't pierce through the dusty landscape as well as the infrared light of JWST. This means there are fewer stars visible and they aren't as bright, and the distant background is nowhere near as well populated with far away background objects, mainly galaxies. That said, the cavity around this bright star is still wonderfully resolved, and the textures and structures of the gas and dust are still stunning. Plus, the more natural colours of this image are beautiful too. JWST sees infrared light, in this case near-infrared light, which is completely invisible to human eyes. The telescope effectively works like a heat camera, and our eyes can't see that kind of light at all. This means the colours added here aren't exactly real, but they are chosen in the most scientifically correct way and in similar ways to how we do see visible light colours. But it's important to remember the colours here are a choice. In this case, a good choice in my opinion. And it doesn't change how real and beautiful the data is that makes the image. Just look at those deep blues and those rich golds. This is the same colour palette used in two of the most famous and beautiful JWST images, namely the Pillars of Creation, itself one of the most famous space objects of all time, and the Carina Nebula, one of the very first images ever released by JWST. These are both also lush star-forming regions, with structures of gas and dust that give stunning landscapes, but all are being eroded by high-energy radiation from the stars being born in those very clouds. In this image, the cyan colour indicates hot hydrogen, 
gas being heated up by the stars. Orange shows the dust that's similar to smoke here on Earth. Red shows cooler, denser molecular hydrogen. And the darker the red, the denser the gas. In fact, black denotes the densest regions of gas that are not emitting any light. The beautiful, wispy white features are also dust and gas. In this case, scattering starlight in all directions and giving an ethereal glow to the image. I recommend checking out the full resolution image if you can, and I'll leave a link to that in the description if you do want to check it out. The tallest spire in the image spans about 5.4 light years from its tip to the bottom of the image. It's so big that more than 200 of our solar systems, from the Sun to Neptune's orbit, could fit within just the very tip of that spire, which is 0.14 light years. With the release of the image, we also got a cool 3D visualization of the data too. This takes the real data and it adds a bit of a creative twist. It gives us more of a sense of the 3D structures and how everything is positioned in that 3D space relative to each other. For example, it makes it much easier to picture the cavities being carved out around the stars and some of the vast scales at play here. I think it looks really awesome, but we should remember that some of this is being inferred from the data and some artistic license has been used too, since the telescope doesn't give us a 3D image like this. Leave me any questions or comments you have about all of this down below. Check out our JWST and Animals in Space merch if you're interested in that sort of thing, and thanks a lot for watching. Until next time, stay safe team. I'll see you soon. Bye!